Well hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the game that we're looking at today which is Change a Homeless Survival Experience. It's uh, developed and published by Delve Interactive. Uh, I'm not super familiar, they had a game called Poncho a few years back. So not a huge catalogue, but this seems to be being very well received and I quite like it actually, so not a bad start either. It's available on Steam, so PC only from what I can tell. And it's going for about 20 bucks Australian, which would probably be about $12 US. And I think there's a launch window discount of around 10%. So there's your sort of basics. Uh, what is this game? Well, it is it is self-explanatory after a fashion. It is a homeless survival roguelike game. It's got some nice pixel graphics and it's got the side-scrolling sort of presentation. Um, and it's obviously got itself wrapped in the trappings of... Uh, of being homeless, of role-playing a homeless person. I was super apprehensive about even looking at this game in the first place. Um, not uh, for any particular, you know, it's not like personal reasons or anything like that. It's just I try and stay away from controversy if I can help it on the channel. And truth be told, I kind of, when I heard about this game, I assumed it was going to be another one of these shovelware simulator games that you're seeing all the time. Not to use House Flipper as an example, but House Flipper's success created this gold rush around, hey, I'm going to simulate pulling nails out of boards and all that sort of stuff. So there's some actually really bad simulator games out there. And I kind of just assumed this was another one of those, like a homeless bum simulator sort of thing. Bad taste and bad gameplay. I'm so glad that I looked into it and gave it a go because this game's actually really good. It's really solid on one hand as a game that stands on its own rights via its gameplay and the implementation of its actual thematic trappings, but also it handles the theme tastefully. Let me get back to that. We'll do that secondary, but I'll go through the first. So look, essentially, it's tough uh, playing this game as it should be, but um, it's sort of it's good compared to you see some more softer roguelikes these days, and I don't mind that. That's it's good to have something for every audience. But this game, the the meta goal is to sort of go from living on the street. Your dude loses his he gets his locks uh, his locks locked, I suppose, on his apartment at the very beginning. It's that's it. It's homeless from day one. Um, and there's narrative little uh, at the end of the day, sort of. Uh, passages that give you an idea of, you know, the descent from being a, an everyday normal person, I guess, down into the sort of homeless. So you're not, you're not established. It's sort of, it's, it's almost like a, a journey uh, through it. It's very interesting. Um, it's, it actually was thought provoking and it gave me uh, moments to pause about things like, even like residency, for example, because you're trying to get out and you can rifle around and pick up garbage and take it to the sort of uh, scrap exchange, you can go through bins looking for food and all that, you can beg, you can do all these sort of things, but that's all good and well um, in and of itself, but where do you go from there? And the meta objective is to actually progress and climb out of the hole, and it is incredibly difficult to scrounge together enough dollars and stay at the same sort of shelter uh, several times to get it marked for residency so you can start getting you know, even library cards, but things that require you to have a residence to have. This isn't something I ever thought of going without, personally, to be perfectly honest. It's not super eye-opening, but it is actually thought-provoking, which was kind of cool. So the game is a, a mixture, especially in the early game, of just doing what you can to not die. You've got, you know, happiness, hygiene, food, all this sort of stuff. Obviously, happiness is kind of relative to the situation. It's more of a, if we're being perfectly honest, it's like a depression tracking meter, and if that hits zero, you check out. Um, I mean, I'm not trying to be flippant, but it's definitely not about, oh, gee, I'm happy about my situation. I think it's more about being happy enough to power through and get by. Um, you know, you can get mugged, you can, you can interfere for almost no reason other than, you know, just sort of being a morally good guy and help people that are in trouble. Um, you do have, like, a street reputation that goes into it, you can study at the library to try and get jobs. Um, if you go rummaging through the rubbage too much, your clothes will get so dirty that they have like a hygiene cap and then you can't get into places like the library. Then you have to save up to buy other new clothes or go to a laundry. It's actually very robust and thought through, but those early stages are just about don't get sick, don't starve, 
um, get by from day to day until you get into a little bit of a rhythm. And then you can start looking towards, well, maybe I'm going to study up to try and get ahead or, or uh, you know, maybe potentially even try and rent a place. So you have these sort of end game goals, which I think really completes this package because if, uh, if it was just, you know, rummaging around and that was it, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't actually make for much of a game. Um, so I actually really enjoy it. Uh, at its very core, it has a really cool perk system. So you're leveling up as you do stuff, and it actually seems to be skill dependent. So, for example, say you um, uh, say you uh, pick up a lot of scrap, you're gonna get prompted to take scrap perks, um, that that sort of thing. So it's almost like a, God dare I say a build based sort of uh, skilling up uh, economy. So if you do do certain things, like say you actually do spend a lot of time in the library studying or, or, or something like that, it will start to give you more like bookwormy skills. So you can sort of try and figure out your own way to navigate it. Um, there are multiple sort of origins that you can start from. You just start with the, the generic one, but they unlock as you spend time in them. So this is the sort of meta progression from rogue lights that we've come to expect where you do a run, but then outside of the run, it unlocks more things. So it's got everything. It's got everything that it's supposed to have for industry standard. It looks great. The writing seems fine. Obviously, it's dealing with miserable subject material, sort of like there's a this war of mine feel to this. You know, it's good and you know it's good, but it is kind of miserable to play as well. Uh, it's, you know, it's, not he it's neither here nor there, but some people that might just want to play I don't know, Super Mario Sunshine or something like that. I'm not trying to be disparaging, but say you're like a Nintendo fanboy or whatever, you're probably not going to like this game because it's unpleasant, the whole the whole subject material. Um, on that, I will say the way I would have seen something like this, it would go one of two ways, right? Either it would handle it really tastelessly as I was worried of, and it didn't, but I'm just sort of, this is hypothesizing how you would deal with um, touchy subject matter, I suppose. I would have thought it was just going to be poor form. It's going to be taking the piss out of homeless people. I mean, it's a plight that a lot of us don't think about. Most of us try not to think about and pretend it's not going on, um, if we're being perfectly honest. But it's a, it's a real problem. Uh, here in Australia as well. I know US has some really bad problems with it too, but, you know, it's, it's pretty awful here as well. And instead of just using it as a, an excuse for gameplay and just being insensitive or anything like that. It doesn't, actually. It seems very sensitive, and the, the little story beats that are going along are actually quite, uh, well, I suppose, tempered, because they're not hitting you over the head with it either, which was the other extreme I was thinking of. So if on one end, if you could handle it tastelessly, I believe on the other end, you could belt someone over the head, and no one wants that, especially these days. Um... There's a, there's a lot of culture these days about sort of standing on your soapbox and blasting your opinion as loud as you can, thanks to the internet and Twitter and that sort of stuff. And while we're not getting into that, because of our current climate, I suppose, culturally, I had concerns that this was just going to be a guilt trip simulator and, you know, tell you how much of a bag of shit that you were for not having more to do with helping the homeless. And it doesn't do that either. So it does handle it tastefully. Um... It's a solid gameplay with that homeless trapping over the top with some story progression and beats that come up that are sad and they seem fairly grounded, but it's not preachy either. One thought I will just sort of close out with, and in case it's not clear, I do recommend this game. It's a lot of fun. I found myself um, like unabashedly enjoying it, enjoying the grind because fundamentally this has to be a grind. Your dude's got to just grind all day getting enough dollars to try and maybe like buy one thing that will get him ahead and hope you don't get mugged or whatever. And I found myself grinding and grinding and grinding and, and actually really enjoying it. So I do recommend this game if you're interested. But um, what I was going to say, just a thought generally about, uh, I suppose, game design. It could be any media, but when you're going to hang your hat on a certain theme, right? like this. This is this is a bit controversial, right? That's why I've had to address it. And while it did do it in a third option, which was in the middle, tastefully and not tasteless, and beating you over the head or anything like that, 
I almost got to wonder why. Why would you use this theme in the first place? Like, people do things for controversy. I could quite easily see someone selling this game purely w with a, a average game underneath and the whole point was to make some sort of social statement, you know, about the about the way things are with with homelessness. And that being the whole game. That's not really a game, but I could quite easily see it, and I've seen it with other sort of things happen, where that's the whole thing. It's about championing a cause. And while I don't approve of that, I understand what's going on there. This, it seems strange. It's like they take an unnecessary risk by dealing with a very sensitive touchy subject matter and the the odds of getting it wrong and upsetting people either in the pursuit of controversy or being tone deaf seem i think too high especially when you're not actually playing this for some sort of motive or agenda so they handled it really tastefully and that's well done they navigated it really well and i didn't think they would but then i gotta wonder but to what end you could have just as easily done it under a different theme with less risk. But who knows, maybe it will move copies because people come to it thinking, oh my god, this is going to be controversial as anything. But uh, but that was just a thought that I had. Um, I'm all for taking risks if you know what your agenda is about, but it almost feels like by making it a homeless game, they took a really unnecessary risk, especially when they weren't championing the chords or anything like that. Not that I'm encouraging that, but just a thought, just a thought that was running in the back of my head while I was playing this. Anyway, guys, look, it's out now. Um, it's a great little example of what a good indie could be. I hope that I put it on your radar if you didn't know about it. That's the whole reason I do these segments, because I want to say, hey, look, I've got a, a smallish channel, but it still reaches people with these things that maybe maybe you'd never heard of this before and you had no idea, and this might just pique your interest, and then it goes in towards supporting the, uh, the indie industry, I suppose. Anyway, team, thanks again for joining me. We might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.